The Ionic Framework team are building Ionic 4 at this moment, and you may have seen my videos on Ionic 4 and Vue, but also they're building a project called Capacitor. This makes dealing with native APIs much easier on the device and mobile web. At the moment, Capacitor is currently in alpha, so I would expect everything to change throughout this video, or at least be potentially changing. But one of the great things about Capasta is the fact that it can be used without Ionic. So you can simply use whatever UI framework you want and you can build and use these plugins. So what we're going to do is make a new Ionic application, integrate Capasta and get that so we can take a photo with the camera on the device. So first up, we want to be inside of the terminal. So we want to set Ionic start and the name of our application will be called Cap Camera. And we'll use the blank template to do that. It's going to ask me to upgrade the Ionic CLI, but at this moment, I'm going to say no, but I would suggest that you keep yours updated. And next up, it's going to ask whether we want to integrate Cordova with the project. Usually we would say yes at this point, but as we want to use Capacitor, I'm going to select no. This will then run and install our project on our computer. It will take some time to download and install the dependencies. So give this a couple of minutes, go make a coffee and come back. Once that has finished, we can CD into Cap Camera. And I'm just going to run npm run build and this will create a www folder. This will be required for the next few steps. So just let that build. Up next, we want to install the Capacitor CLI and Capacitor Core. Go ahead and do that inside of your project. And because Capacitor comes along with its own splash screen, we need to uninstall the Cordova plugin splash screen. If we don't do that, we would have a conflict. So by doing this, our application will work correctly. Next up, we want to initialize Capacitor. So we're going to use NPX. What NPX does is it's similar to NPM, but NPX allows us to run a command once. So instead of having to install this uh, globally on our machine, we just continually run it and it doesn't actually exist on the machine. So we want to say NPX cap init, and this will initialize a new Capacitor project. The app name will be Capacitor Camera. And the app ID, will be com dot and then whatever you want to call yours. So I'll just simply call it ph dot camera. As you can see, our capacitor project is now ready to go and we need to add some platforms. I'll be adding iOS in this instance. So let's go ahead and do that with npx cap add iOS. This will go ahead and install the iOS dependencies. And as you can see, it needed those web assets from the www folder. That was why it was important that we built the project earlier on. So we've now integrated Capacitor with Ionic. So let's open up our project inside of Visual Studio Code. The first thing that we want to do when we want to add the camera to an iOS project is head over to iOS app inside of app. We then want to add the info.plist. And when we're using the camera, it's required by iOS that we must have this NS camera usage description. So by default, it exists and you can see that it is to take photos and video. So we don't have to worry about this at the moment, but there may be some plugins in the future that you need to add extra things to this list. For Android, it's a similar thing. We need to add the permissions for the camera and reading to writing to external storage to our Android manifest. We want to head over to the home.html and we'll change this to Ionic Capacitor. Inside of Ion Content, we we'll want an image and a button. The button can have the text of take picture and we'll set the Ion button attribute to this button. When the user clicks the button, we want to fire a particular function and that function will start up the camera so that we can take a photo. So we'll add a click event and we'll call this take photo. So the user will now be able to select the button and we want the image to then appear inside of this image. So to do that, we want to set the source of the image equal to the image we get back from taking that photo. Let's go and make these two things inside of the home component. 
to start off with, we'll need a take photo function. And inside of here, we want to take that photo and set the image that we get back from the user equal to the image that we want to display. So let's make an image. And that needs to be of type safe resource URL. What exactly does this mean? Well, we need to import that from Angular Platform Browser to start with. But you may have seen a video on my YouTube channel in the past about dynamic URLs. We looked at this with YouTube and importing YouTube videos. And what essentially we need to do is tell Angular that this image here should be trusted. Next up, we need to import capacitor and the plugin. So we'll import from at capacitor slash core. And we'll need plugins, camera result type, and camera source. We can destructure the plugins to take the camera. So this will give us access to the get photo method. And we can then make a result and that will be equal to camera.getPhoto. You'll notice that if we hit a dot at the end of this, that we do get back a promise. So we can take advantage of async and await. Let's make this an async function and await on the result. This means that the value of getting that photo will be assigned to this result variable. We need to pass in an object and that object will allow us to configure the camera. We'll set the quality equal to 75. We'll allow the user to edit the photo. We'll set the source of the photo equal to camera source dot camera. But if you wanted to, you could also set this to be something like camera source dot photos. And we also want to set the result type. Let's make that the camera result type dot. And as you can see, we can either have a URI to the file path or the base64 result. We'll set that to base64 for now, but do be careful with this because you will get back a massive string and that's not great for production and performance. So we have this base64 result. We need to tell Angular now that we want to set the image by saying this.image is equal to result. But we need to ensure that this is sanitized and that's done with the DOM sanitizer. So from Angular Platform Browser, let's add the DOM sanitizer. We'll also need to inject this using private DOM sanitizer of type DOM sanitizer. And we can say that the result of this image is this dot DOM sanitizer dot bypass security trust resource URL. And we want to do this for the result and the result dot base 64 data. Hopefully now we've done everything correctly. How do we then boot this up on our device and at the same time, take a photo? Well, now we're back over to our terminal and I want to build our project again because we're currently not serving the project. So we need to rebuild that with npm run build. Once this is completed, we need to run npx cap copy and this will copy over our Ionix www folder over to the capacitor project. So we need to open this now inside of Xcode or Android Studio if you want to run this on an Android device. So let's run npx cap open iOS. Inside of Xcode, we want to make sure that we have app selected and we want to run this on our iPhone device. If you run this on a simulator, you'll find that the camera most likely won't work. So let's hit the play button. So here we are, we have our application. We can then hit take photo. And by doing so, we can then take a photo with the device's camera. We can select to use photo. And when we do that, our photo appears here on screen. So that's how we can use capacitor with Ionic to take photos on our device. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, hit that subscribe button to stay updated with more content and check out my Ionic courses and buck over at paulhalliday.io. Oh, this you crazy mother.